Thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks for inviting me. Excellent. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm pumped. Uh, you're, you're local. This is uh, probably one of the more local episodes, right? Right in Cambridge. I'm in Boston, not far from one another. Uh, yeah. 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 We'll have to grab coffee at some point once uh, we can. <laughs> I know, I know. I keep telling everyone this is the center of healthcare now in the U.S. It's all happening right here. I, that's what I tell people. And then I keep getting pushed back, which no offense to the other major cities out there, right? But uh, <laughs> I always hear like, no, it's Nashville. Or I mean, I, I, <laughs> I still always think of Boston when, when you think of healthcare, right? I know Nashville is, is very big in the healthcare space, New York as well. Right. Um, but I, I still think we're the, this yeah. is where healthcare is happening. Right. Well, it's also happening on zoom right now because of the pandemic. So that's, that's been kind of interesting, you know, everything's become democratized and, and, and talent is, is everywhere these days. Uh, it's going to, yeah, it's going to be crazy. Yeah. I have a friend running a health tech company in Iowa. Who, <laughs> awesome. you know, who would have thought <laughs> you could have, you know, a, a scalable company in, in some of these rural spots. Now it's, it's not that it wasn't possible before. I just think now it's considered more of uh, the norm, right? Yeah. The way to do it. Well, I'm excited to get started. Why don't we dive right into it? I'd love if you could tell the audience a little bit about yourself and then we will go from there. Sure. So I'm Ankit. I'm the founder of Bicycle Health. I uh, come from a, a background of kind of at the intersection of technology and, and user-centric design. Uh, so I am a software engineer by training. I did my undergrad uh, in computer science in India and master's in computer science at Stanford. Um, I, I really enjoy building products and services that, that make a big impact in people's lives. Um, and, and that's what we're trying to do at Bicycle Health. Um, you know, before Bicycle Health, I started a company uh, with a friend of mine called Pulse News, uh, which was a mobile app to read news on the go. Uh, it's, it seems uh, quaint these days, uh, but the company was launched back when the iPad had just come out. Uh, and so we kind of ran the company for a few years, uh, uh, you know, scaled to uh, millions of people using the app uh, and now it's actually fully integrated into LinkedIn. Um, and, and, you know, after this journey, I, I, I wanted to do uh, uh, work on something bigger, work on another kind of problem that I can really, you know, really contribute and really make a meaningful impact. Um, and through a series of coincidences, uh, ended up working on bicycle health and working on helping people overcome opioid use disorder. How'd you come up with the name? <laughs> uh, there's, there's lots of different, you know, everyone has their own, uh, uh, own reasoning behind what the name stands for. Uh, you know, bicycle could be kind of this circle of addiction that people are in sometimes, you know, it's a, it's a, a chronic disease. Um, uh, bicycle also stands for health and freedom, um, and, and the ability to change your life. Um, for, for me personally, I am really inspired by Steve Jobs and, and the impact he has on the world. And one of the ways he described the computer as is, uh, is a tool and, and actually the bicycle of the mind um, because it's a tool that actually pushes the human capability forward. Uh, just like a bicycle allows us to move faster than, than walking. Um, and so I really like that metaphor of healthcare being being something that pushes us forward. It's a tool, it goes in the background uh, and it doesn't overtake us or take over our capabilities in any way, but actually just pushes us forward to do what we want and live better lives. Uh, so that's why we call the company Bicycle Health. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Uh, that's, a, that's a good explanation too. I like the Steve Jobs reference. Uh, <laughs> I feel like if, if anyone's in the tech space, I mean, you might not always agree, right, with maybe his, uh, how he treated people necessarily right but yeah I think everyone will agree just the way that he thought about business and like strat strategy right was just uh it, it was so deep and just that the, his that saying alone right the bicycle for the mind that's really cool what what are can you tell us more about bicycle health um 
and we, we can kind of go from there. Yeah. So Bicycle Health is a telehealth clinic uh, for helping people overcome opioid use disorder. Um, so we, uh, you know, there are millions of people, in fact, uh, almost 90 million people get an opioid prescription every year in the U.S. Um, and it's no secret that we have an opioid epidemic and the pandemic is making the opioid epidemic worse. Um, I think some of, something that people uh, don't necessarily know is, is uh, sort of how much of the opioid use is actually driven from prescription opioids. Uh, so it's not just people using opioids recreationally. And, uh, and a lot of people that are using prescription opioids chronically, that means frequently, you know, every day, a lot of them actually want to get off of these opioids and they have a hard time getting off opioids because of the withdrawal, uh, because of the cravings. And it's not necessarily an addiction. I mean, you know, in, in the medical term, it might be classified as an opioid use disorder if they come to us. Uh, uh, and, and if that is the diagnosis, we help them get off opioids. Um, but a lot of times the person is embarrassed by their opioid use and the inability to get off opioids and, and they don't really consider themselves as having an addiction. Um, and, and so what we discovered was they would never even seek addiction treatment, whether, whether it's in the form of an outpatient clinic or a rehab or, 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 or even go to their primary care doctor and admit that this is a problem they're having. Um, and so I think that's the reason why Bicycle Health exists. So we help people with a hard time uh, getting off of opioids uh, to, to provide them the treatment that helps them overcome withdrawal, help them overcome cravings. And over time, we help them help them overcome opioid use altogether. Uh, and the treatment methodology is, is pretty um, proven. Uh, it's called medication-assisted treatment, which is a combination of a medication called uh, buprenorphine naloxone. Uh, so that's a medication that helps them overcome cravings. And, and, um, and then uh, uh, along with the medication, we provide uh, you know, counseling, therapy, support groups, health coaching, you know, the ingredients that are needed for uh, long-term behavior change, skill building, and, and, and things like that, that sort of together the medication and the behavior change actually help them overcome opioid use and, and, and live, uh, work towards the health and wellness goals that they have. Uh, and, and this treatment is completely delivered over telemedicine. Uh, so you don't have the stigma of addiction. It's convenient. You can, you can be at home doing these visits. You can, you can take a break from work, go to your car and get on a video call. Uh, so you don't have to drive anywhere. So it's really convenient. It's also really affordable, especially now when people are losing jobs and, and are actually using health insurance because of that. Um, and, and yeah, all, all in all, it's just, uh, you know, much easier to, to stay in treatment and get better. Uh, what's, why, why is this space so important to you? Do you have, like, what's, what's your why with, with bicycle health? Yeah, uh, you know, personally, I, I don't have a direct connection with opioid use disorder or, or opioid addiction. But the reason why I got excited about this problem was through pain management. Um, and so uh, I've seen pain in my family. Uh, I, I have family members who have chronic pain. I've helped them uh, just, just by being a family member. I've helped them research alternatives, solutions, you know, uh, help them go to doctor's appointments or see the fact that they went, tried a bunch of therapeutics and they didn't work. And, and even after 10 years, you know, you might be, uh, people in my family still have chronic pain and, and they, have, they have no other alternative to, to manage that. And so passively, I saw that for a long time. And then when I was thinking about what I wanted to do next, I, I was just naturally attracted by, by pain management because uh, we, we know so little about it. Uh, and so I ended up doing a lot of research in pain management and ended up connecting with uh, 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 an anesthesiologist. His name is uh, Dr. Ramo Naidu. He, he has an, uh, a pain clinic in Marin, um, in, in California. And so I just ended up spending time with his clinic just to understand what, what happens in pain management and what we can do in, in some ways to prevent people from taking opioids, right? So I was really excited about alternative therapies, complementary techniques, um, and, and just through that experience, I ended up uh, interacting with the patients that are coming in. And I saw that there were many, many people on chronic opioids, much more than what I would have expected first. 
And second, the pain therapies that we had didn't really help them overcome their opioid use. The, the treatment that we're providing now, medication as treatment, was the only one that would actually help them overcome opioid use in a sustained way over the long term. But because of the stigma of addiction, because of convenience, affordability, all of these factors, they, they won't really uh, access this treatment. Uh, and, and so basically there was a gap where, you know, uh, uh, and the people that were coming into the pain clinic were, were not, my stigma of the opioid crisis was it someone shooting up heroin or someone dying on the street or someone who is homeless. That was just my personal bias that I was bringing in, having no connection to this problem. But the people that I saw that potentially had opioid use disorder were, were actually people like me or my, my mom, my grandma, you know, my dad, you know, someone who has a surgery, someone who has a C-section, you get prescribed opioids. Uh, you have a back injury, you get prescribed opioids, and then it's hard to predict whether you'll become dependent on them or not. Um, so everyday people struggling with getting off of opioids coming to the pain clinic, but, but actually that's not the right place for them to be. Um, and so that's where I got really passionate about this, this problem where we have a solution, right? We have a treatment that is super effective, that's cheap. It has generic medications in it, but and then millions of people struggling with this, but, but there's, there's a lack of access. And, and, and I think technology uh, is able to bridge that gap, which is what is really exciting to me as a software engineer, um, because one of the things that I, I really wanted to achieve is how can technology really make a significant impact in the healthcare world um, in those areas? You know, how can we scale access? How can we make sure outcomes are consistent, uh, and how can we make healthcare affordable to people? And technology can actually really help with all of that. So I was coming in from that frame of mind and, and this problem I got introduced to, which, which actually um, uh, really fit perfectly in, in, in uh, leveraging technology to achieve those goals. Wow, no, that's, that's a good why. I, I, it's, even though there's not like a, a direct like, experience where you're, you know, having opioid addiction, um, those, those connecting points make a lot of sense, right? And your software background, I think, is we need more of that in healthcare. We need more of, and I wouldn't even call you an outsider. It's like the, the mixture, though, of like the outsiders and the insiders working together to create solutions because just having the insiders or just having outsiders go after the problems that are so common with, uh, within healthcare as a whole, right? There's a lot of problems. Uh, I don't think that that works, right? You need to have the two come together in order to actually create solutions to these big problems. Yeah, and that's actually why before Bicycle, I ended up starting a nonprofit called Docs and Hackers. Uh, and, and the idea behind Docs and Hackers was to bring the tech industries and healthcare industries closer together. You know, just have the people meet each other because the healthcare people know what the problems are. The tech people have the time and fundraising ability, networks, all that good stuff to actually create solutions. Um, and they, they want to create solutions, but they don't know what the problems are. So <laughs> personally, just for me to, to learn about the space and also to help others, uh, we ended up you know, working on this nonprofit. So that's going on uh, along with Bicycle. Yeah, no, uh, I've actually, I've heard about the program. I need to attend. I know you used to do some things uh, at the WeWork on Portland Street, right? Didn't yeah. you used to have some meetups there? Yeah. Yeah. Pre-pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Well, once we're once we're through all of this, I look forward to to being able to ten, uh, attend uh, some of those. Yeah. We as we uh, as we wrap up, can you just tell the audience where they can learn more about the the company? Absolutely. So uh, you can go to the website uh, bicyclehealth.com. Um, you uh, can also email us, um, you know, at info at bicyclehealth.com if you have any questions uh, or just connect with me on, on LinkedIn or, or Twitter. Um, uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, we're, we just, we just want to, we have big ambitions and we want to really, really help. So, uh, you know, if you, if you, we have tons of data, if you want to do research on our data, if you want to, you want to think about outcomes, if you want to, partner as a payer or provider, uh, or if you're struggling <laughs> with opioid use, right? And, and uh, 
no one needs to know, but, but we can certainly help you uh, overcome opioid use. Perfect. And I'll throw those, in the, uh, those links in the show notes so people will be able to easily go to your, your website and learn more about the company. Uh, Fantastic. Thank you again for, for coming on the podcast. Really appreciate it. Look forward to staying in touch with you and following the progress of Bicycle Health. Thanks, Jared.